We're going to get into it today. It's going to be a fun one. We'll break down Bitcoin and a whole bunch of altcoins. Uh, of course, before we, before we get started, I want to you know thank our sponsor, and that's Lux Algo. We'll actually be showing some Lux Algo charts with Jacob today, so it'll be a good one. But enhance your, enhance your trading experience with Lux Algo. All you have to do is click the link down below, and you can join and become a Lux Algo trader. Very simple. And we'll show you some of the cool uh, tips on that. I want to lead off with the Bitcoin story right here. Um, mainly Bitcoin rebounding up to 43K. There is a bit of a concern right now, though, with macro pressure. This is something we talked about in our spaces last week, which if you guys are not checking out our Twitter account, go to Paul Barron TV. We'll leave a pinned post up there here in the next few days where you can join a space uh, on 9 a.m. on Fridays is when we've been doing it. So check it out. But one of the things that has been a factor is whether or not there's going to be enough macro pressure. Remember the jobs report came out. We had great jobs numbers. Though we are seeing not necessarily a softening of inflation, many people are concerned, is this going to turn inflation around and lengthen the situation where we don't get a Fed rate cut? So that's a big one. So I want to have uh, Jacob jump in from Luxalgo and let's break down a chart or two. So, hey, Jacob, how's it going? Hey, how you doing, Paul? Hey, let's get into a couple of things. You saw the, the lead there on Bitcoin. Uh, I want to jump on Bitcoin first and take a mm -hmm. look at your anticipation, especially over the next few weeks, on how Bitcoin is reacting right now at the 43K mark. What's it look like? Yeah, for sure. Um, so this area, not a massive fan on picking a direction, right? I mean, we want to see some volume to move, but I will say noticing on Bitcoin, especially the daily, we've been watching after it finally kind of fell off a bit, um, and broke that rough support before it tried to make its push to 50. Um, it's still roughly struggling as it's come back to, you know, this resistance it originally broken out of. So I already have kind of marked on here what I'm currently watching to be whether, you know, lean more of the bullish or the bearish side. And yeah. that would be roughly, you know, this previous high that got set, I would honestly say 44,000 would be that mark in which I would consider a nice little bull run considering Though we do have a bit of, you know, this is what an imbalance is where when you have a massive uh, amount of sellers come through a bunch of different levels, they there's uh, for the most part, they leave behind people that might have wanted to get out at those levels. So there is a, a, a sense where if we do trade into the 45, we could see some resistance as well as it lines up with that previous resistance. But for now, it's like we're kind of, you know, we broke these lows, we came back, we recovered those lows. We're in this kind of like, you know, back and forth period in which we need to see some directional change to actually confirm that this thing wants to hold or not. So uh, definitely indecisive where we're at for sure. Yeah, this is one of those ranges that I don't necessarily love with Bitcoin in the sense of that you don't see the volatility, just like what you mm -hmm. saw on the money flow there on the chart. And also just the uncertainty with the markets, because macro is typically a big driver of Bitcoin. We know that happening here now with it being February, we're just really a couple of months away. So that in itself, because it's going to be an early May happening, I just wonder if we're going to get enough pressure here from both the March FOMC meeting, which I think is going to be the critical one, along with the CPI mm -hmm. numbers, the inflation numbers coming in. So this is going to be an interesting couple of months right now. Would you say that Bitcoin for February would be bearish or bullish for you? If you just looked at, you know, the close at the end of uh, January. Yeah, I mean, I could even look. Let's look at the uh, weekly. That's that's a, probably a better bet on what we're yeah. looking at for this. It's it's really going to depend on what comes up in the next few weeks. So like we said, that 44K mark is very important, in my opinion, because the amount of times that the weekly closed or opened uh, a week mm -hmm. at the 44K um, is quite insane up here um, as yeah. we've made this move. So essentially, if if it's going to actually extend higher, it's going to have to get a close above that um, and then a, a continued open the following week above it as well. So if it's below that 44 mark right now, I'm not very bullish on this in this current state. I mean, it's still trying to come off these highs um, as well. And like you said, the volatility is not there right now. So yeah, I think sure. it is a big anticipation on everything we heard about this past FOMC that March is a really big date and a really big uh, minutes that's going to come out. So yeah. it's a, probably going to be anticipating that for sure. So hopefully well, it's know, maybe we do. Yeah, it's the critical one before what we'll see in, in terms of the happening. We will get one more uh, print of inflation, which could 
possibly yes. uh, give us a, a bit more data before May, depending on when the actual date actually locks in for the happening. I want to jump to Ethereum. Uh, Robinhood adds the MetaMask for easier Ethereum buys. A couple of points within this article that I'll showcase for you guys watching. Idea, the company said, is the process of buying crypto from a number of pr different providers would be made quicker and easier. So this means easier access for Robinhood clients to Ethereum and Ethereum-based tokens. So that's, an, a, that's a new benefit, I think, with Robinhood. They're quickly becoming a pretty good player, I think, in the market. How this affects Ethereum, I think, maybe not as much as the Solana situation. Solana, of course, mm -hmm. uh, was down. Not everybody's loving that. Here you have Alcorn Gordon talking about it. <laughs> yes. you know, Ethereum's never down. Uh, are you getting it yet, guys? So if you look at that, <laughs> and then you also look at the big news on Ethereum, which was ENS. ENS, kind of the, think of this as the naming service. Think of it at the domain level. If you're a, you know, a dot-com owner, you know this. But now that's available. They partnered with GoDaddy, ENS, one of the tokens that rides within the Ethereum ecosystem, meaning GoDaddy, Ethereum now, bonded. What does Ethereum look like right now? There's a little movement here. We're seeing a yes. little bit of activity. Today is so what fantastic. Do you, um, what do you like? Man, that <laughs> that 3% move today, like it kind of shocked me waking up to seeing that, um, which is awesome. And it's continuing still. Uh, I mean, I do like to identify kind of if we head back into like these little bit of ranges um, on these profiles that you could plot. Um just in trading view itself, but you know, that 2400 level, obviously it's very significant. If you, if you were to just even um, like see this line, the top of this value range on this profile is right at 2400, but it lines mm -hmm. up as well with resistance. So yeah, this pump is great, but for me, it's like, I, I'm not somebody that wants to fight a, you know, a breakdown. So if this thing's not going to break 2400, I'm not going to be too like, you know, excited about this small pump we're getting today, but this is a great start to say, Hey, you know, we're looking good for this to actually, you know, break through that. So I would love to see a continuation into tomorrow and then 2400, if price can hold that level, I I'm all for it continuing maybe the 25 plus. Um, but you know, the oscillator though is, you know, still roughly at 50. It was coming off of a previous high instead of lower low. So it's like, in this case, you could see the trend formation where it wants to head lower. So once again, it's similar to Bitcoin, except this one is actually making moves today. Um, so I do like it if 2400 wants to kind of peak its head in the next few days. So that's kind of really where my you know analysis lies is that 2400 level being pretty significant. Well, um, it's so holding we'll pretty strong, right? Yeah, holding pretty strong right now at 2380. So, great day, great day. Uh, ETH, ETH on the move. Um, let's take a look at Chainlink because there's quite a bit of, of activity around tokenized assets. If you think about Chainlink in general, the likelihood of Chainlink being one, being one of the core tokens that really starts the real world asset phase of tokenization that we talk about here on the show quite a bit. If you're investing in Chainlink and it's had some moves here over the past week, 10 days, is this still one that you can catch where it is right now? Or is this one that you would say, hey, let's maybe wait for another um, correction before we go back into Chainlink? Yeah, uh, I mean, I wish... Like, I don't feel comfortable fully saying it is. I mean, I will say the weekly time frame, obviously, you can see with all this craziness that happened yeah. back, we had those big moves on Bitcoin and stuff. It's not bad. I think, you know, below 20 bucks is is still pretty good. So it's not something I would say, you know, you need to make your full investment at this level. I do think you would get a bit of a, you know, retracement to maybe below 17, maybe $16. Um, the weekly here, very strong. It's looking really good for a move into the 20s. Uh, I do. I will say that we have a little bit of order block conflict here on the, our price action concepts indicator where very high volume between this uh, 1768 and 1966 range. You can already see it's being affected a bit. And that comes from a level back in um, February of last year or sorry, of 2022. So it hasn't been here in so long. So it's like, this is where the um, not knowing what it might do here at these levels, if they'll come into play. But a lot of volume has been traded there, as you can see it showing um, that it's around 46 million in volume that was right. previously traded at this level. Uh, but again, I'm very uh, bullish here on a daily time frame if it's going to stay above the 17 price point. Okay. I think the 20s are going to hit pretty easily. 
Um, but again, I will say for those of you that, you know, are starting to look into link because of this move it made, um, you know, you take a look at the weekly chart and say, hey, you know, right. below 20 is a good start. Uh, I will say you might be able to get a lower price, though. So, yeah, that's yeah. kind of where so, I would leave it. Maybe wait and watch on this one uh, in terms of adding it to your altcoin bag. Let's talk about another altcoin, and that is Solana. Big network outage this morning. Everybody's screaming about it. The day is now <laughs> happened, which they had kind of a 346-day streak right now of 100% uptime. How much of an impact does this have? I was looking at my chart. And when you look at the money flow kind of coming out, it seems like it's almost entering back in. It's already back up to 97 bucks. Mm -hmm. We saw a little bit of a dip this morning. What do you like about the Solana chart today? I mean, it's impressive, man. And the fact that they have an outage and people, it's still up 2% today. I mean, that's just Makes no mind sense. blowing to me. That's crazy. Um, right. So there's, there's people that believe in this, which is what really solidifies, I think, the idea behind Solana and, and its overall network. So, I mean, its uptime was quite insane. It's had a pretty nice streak for a while now. But I do think on the daily, like you said, I mean, the biggest thing I see with that oscillator is it is coming out. But the best part is it was setting lower highs on its on right. our oscillator and we just broke that previous lower high. So this is mm. all lining up to be a nice bullish formation. So essentially, and the best part about the oscillator is it gives you confirmation. Uh, it, like it's it doubles down on your confirmation. So right. if a higher low is formed on this candle, you might not see that turning point, which is a green turning point, happen until the following day. So the following day would have to have yet another green day to confirm that this is actually a nice uh, higher low. So that's essentially what I would watch is today closing where it's at, maybe you know closer to 100 than tomorrow having a similar bullish day. From there, I think, yeah, we could easily go hit the 104s, maybe up to 106. Uh, but honestly, it's quite impressive to see that this after what we heard today with that news of it being down mm -hmm. it's up you know <laughs> two two and a half percent just, nearly yeah i think there's just been so much news on solana just in the last two weeks that you know the you know we did a full breakdown of this particular token and why you know the congestion was happening within the network and in a way the network congestion was a good thing because there's just so many projects putting these transactions in there so I think the good thing is it's opening up the potential of, you know, things like Fire Dancer and others to really lock in. But to your point, there's some very interesting signals right now on Solana mm -hmm. uh, for sure. And don't forget, you got a lot of tokens within the Solana ecosystem listing over on Coinbase, right? Here was mobile mm -hmm. getting ready to come on. Render's another one. I want to jump to Render real quick. This, of course, Render shed a little bit of, um, of uh, volume right now after... The tran there was a big transfer over to Binance. That's kind of the one big move here. But if you look at Render as a token right now, this is one that you know I own. I like it mainly because I'm very into cloud compute and what that represents. Mm -hmm. What does Render look like long term for you? Yeah, uh, Render weekly charts actually incredible. Um, this thing, you know, it's been in a proper trend for a bit here. You can see there's a little bit of concern during this brief period in Jul in the summer of 23, so last year, right. very low volume, but then volume stepped back in. So really strong, breaks out of you know when it ICO'd on Coinbase, um, but it's holding, right? It's holding above its opening price, which is awesome. It's great to see. That means whatever's happening with Render is pretty much successful right now. Um, now for you know this current state it retraced it showed proper support over you know the last high that it set the day of it going on coinbase um and it's you know continuing this bullish trend i was going to pull up here you know i mean biggest part here let's go to the daily actually for this be a little bit better um so this is quite cool to see especially with the uh singles and overlays uh setup here is we had, you know, this stair stepping with the NEO and it broke. So like it was saying, you know, this right now, temporary high, we need to see the uh, NEO cloud switch. Uh, and it does, NEO cloud does switch, but notice the NEO never thickens. So that's a good sign that the, that's a good sign that the bearish side is not very strong at these levels. So broke back up and now it's kind of setting up yet again. So right now, you know, if it holds this, uh, these highs here around uh, 43, or sorry, uh, yeah, four dollars and thirty-four cents, roughly. Um, I think it's yeah, you know, you're inevitable to potentially break out into the fives again. Um, the oscillator here came out of you know a 
you know, bearish money flow. Now it's flipping potentially to bullish. So it's essentially waiting for this structure to, to actually hold over the uh, $4 and 30 cents, but looks really good. I think on a very high time frame. Uh, so we'll definitely see if it can actually hold up for sure. Hey, Jacob, I was wanting something uh, to learn something on one of the indicators here. When you look at this yeah. chart and you go into mm -hmm. the oscillator matrix and these green dots that occur right here, um, yes. and you see money flow starting to move, it, what does this indicator give me in terms of where the chart direction might be going? Right, so I think of it similar to any type of trend formation. I look for higher lows and lower highs in this in this state. So um, like you can think of it if you're used to an RSI or in a MACD, you can think of it in that case where you look for divergences, you look for price uh, trading opposite, in this case with divergences opposite, that what we call the hyperwave there. Um, right. So essentially what's going to happen is if you see it holding above, the, like you're holding in the upper area, as you can see on the left there, it's usually in a pretty aggressive uptrend. If it comes down into lower area, it's probably starting to uh, you know, form a reversal. Um, but if it comes out of it quickly, like it has already, um, it could essentially just have been a consolidated period before it wants to continue it's uptrend. So it's really, you know, it's showing you with that pullback on the oscillator there that it had to back below 50 that, you yeah. know, this level actually might have been just a great area for price to fluctuate before it wants to continue its move. So that's yeah, so it's, that it's would, definitely would have been uh, a good helps. entry right there. Because if Absolutely. you think about that, yes, yeah. Yeah, you, you would have been right at 36 if you were back there last week, you know, $3.60. Uh, versus where yeah for sure yeah it's definitely uh, right now. and that yeah i would have taken that into effect with possibly like a higher time frame as well make sure that you know in this current trend is it you know possible that this is a good retracement and it definitely right. was especially on a weekly um yeah, right so definitely right. looking no very shot. very good off of that level yeah all right, last one is going to be a stock, and that's NVIDIA. NVIDIA continues to do uh, amazing things, and we're still seeing the S&P perform pretty strong <laughs> right now. Uh, for those of you, by the way, that traded on Meta with us, we just exited Meta too early, and of course now we're kicking ourselves in the butt for that one, but hey, <laughs> it happens. Um, what do you like about NVIDIA right now as far as the chart? Yeah, uh, same same as what we've talked about in the past. It's what's cool actually is to see from before is we actually ha have gotten two exit signals so far on the signals and overlays, but it has a max of three. I mean, this thing is like <laughs> I just I don't even shit. like it's hard. To, yeah, it's incredible. Um, but you know, whenever we look for a potentially that it wants to pot come off of a high or something, and today it was. Man, today the last time I looked at it, it was down here at six hundred and sixty-four dollars. So the fact that it almost it's almost gained another twenty bucks is insane. Um, but essentially, this is what we would want to see happen if we were to consider um, it to be potentially the high. Uh, we want to see it come back inside of the neo, see some purple candles, maybe a two signal mm -hmm. or a, you know an opposing signal. And again, as you can see, we haven't gotten it yet. So anytime the price is trading above the neo, especially something like Nvidia. It's pretty much a hold, in my opinion, until it goes back into that neo cloud. So if I were to zoom okay. in here, it still has it enter that neo. So to me, it's like there's no reason to get out of this thing until it's going to show me that it wants to actually uh, come off of this high. So it's yeah. quite incredible. Right. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. I think this is the thing, too, that we're seeing with a lot of the tech stocks right now that continue just to outperform mm -hmm. this market. But I think a lot of that has been because of it uh, from the sense of the strength of the economy and what we've seen really kind yes. of coming out. Question is going to be summer. If we continue to see a slide mm -hmm. and or a delay on the Fed funds rate as to whether or not we'll see. The yeah, that's the biggest thing continue. is, yeah, right yeah. before summer, that um, that meeting coming up in March, that's going to be huge. So definitely got to yeah, pay attention sure. to that. <laughs> All right, Jacob, we're definitely going to get you back in. We'll break down some more uh, tokens next week. And uh, thanks again for stopping in. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me. You bet. All right, so maybe you guys are not in the Diamond Circle. Make sure and jump into that group. Uh, it's very easy. Just click the link down below. Catch me out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.